Hello and welcome guys. Now in this video we will be learning about LDA algorithm that is linear discriminant analysis or it is also called with the name latent Dreslet uh, allocation. So I mean this algorithm again is based on same principle that PCA is based on. So let's understand how it is different from other algorithms. So latent uh, discrete allocation or you can say linear discriminant analysis. This algorithm is also used in the you know natural language processing field but you know that part we will cover later. So, but let's understand uh, about this one. So this algorithm again is you know dimensionality reduction technique that is used for feature extraction in the field of pattern recognition and machine learning. So unlike PCA which focuses on you know capturing uh, you know variance in the entire data set LDA aim to find a you know subspace that maximizes class separability so what is the main objective of this algorithm so first main objective is maximizing class separability so LDA aim to find a linear combination of features that best separate uh, multiple classes by ma you know maximizing the uh, you know between class distance while minimizing the within class variance then we have another reason that is projecting data so it project the original data set into you know lower dimensional space specifically um, you know one or more dimension while retaining the class discriminatory information then you know other uh, objective is um, supervised learning so it utilizes class labels making it effective for classification task then it is again you know optimal separation feature which help maximize class separability in the reduced, reduced space as well then the other feature is reduced overfitting so which can tell you about generalization or you can say performance by reducing the dimensionality which this algorithm offers then how it is different from pca right that's the question isn't it so first is supervision second is objective third is output so basically uh, what you know supervision says lda require class level for training while pca doesn't so objective says PCA focus on capturing variance while LDA empathize a uh, class separability. Then uh, output, uh, which basically PCA's provide component explaining my, uh, you know maximum variance while LDA offer discriminant direction of class representation. Then I mean the use case of this LDA algorithm can be classification problem where feature dimension are very high. Then feature extraction for improving classification accuracy. Third case will be reducing computational comp complexity by reducing the feature dimensions. Now let's understand LDA key steps. Okay, so how do we reach to the you know the outcome that we actually want? So first step is we calculate the means. So for each uh, class in the data set, we compute the mean vector which represents the mean value of each feature for that class. Then the mean vector captures the central tendency or you can say average of data within the each class. Hope that is clear. Next we compute the scatter matrix. So what is this? So within class matrix or you know it is also called as SW which basically measure the spread or dispersion of data point within the each class. So it is computed by summing up the you know scatter matrix for individual classes and the scatter matrix for you know each class represent how much the data point within that class deviate from their class mean. Then we have SB okay so between class scatter matrix okay this one okay so it measures the spread or separation between different classes and it is calculated by considering the difference between the class means and this matrix quantifies the separation between different classes by analyzing the distance between their mean vector then we have compute eigenvalue and eigenfactor so solving the generalized eigenvalue problem we use the equation called S sw to the power minus 1 into sb so to calculate the eigenvalue and factor so sw to the power minus 1 represent the inverse of the within class scatter matrix the the eigenvalue represent the magnitude and the you know variance in the direction of the corresponding eigenvector while eigenvector correspond to largest eigenvalue are the linear discriminant that provide the best separation between classes that is what you know we got here next we are uh, what we do is we project you know into new feature space so basically here we you know so we select transformation you know matrix selection and we select the k eigenvector correspond to k largest eigenvalues so these eigenvector forms a uh, you know transformation matrix that map the original high uh, you know high dimensional space to lower dimensional space then we do you know uh, you know projecting into new subspace so we multiply the original data set by transforming the matrix to obtain the lower dimensional representation and this projection create a new feature space where the data is represented along the direction that maximizes the class separation so 
So to summarize, the LDA aim to find subspace where the classes are well defined or well separated while preserving the class discrimination information as much as possible. So this process helps in reducing the dimensionality of the data while enhancing its discriminatory power for classification task. Now let's see the mathematical, uh, you know, formulations. Okay, so so first of all, again, what uh, what we discussed, we calculate the means. Okay, so uh, we compute the class mean. Okay, so I mean this particular thing that you see. So calculate the mean vector for each class. That is mu k for k equal to one, two, three up till k. Okay, then after that, so basically here n is the number, uh, you know, total number of sample. Okay, and x is the uh, is, uh, so x is the n into d matrix representing the data set okay now let's move to uh, you know uh, computing the within class scatter matrix that is sw so sw you know captures the uh, scatter of data point within each class so it is represented using uh, summation of k equal to 1 till k then i equal to 1 till n to k so x minus mu k into x1 minus mu k to the power t so x represents the whole data set okay and uh, while k represent a total number of classes okay now uh, again same thing for you know sb okay so what sb says it's uh, you know compute the between class scatter matrix and it measures the scatter between class mean okay and basically a mu that you see here is uh, you know overall mean of all data point okay mu is overall data uh, uh, you know mean of all data point okay now we compute the you know um, generalized eigenvector problem okay so before that let me tell you I mean this equation that you see is you know coming from this which x is you know basically replaced from this particular term okay which is overall mean of all data point okay so hope you guys understood this let's compute the generalized eigenvector pro uh, eigenvalue problem okay so here what actually we do we find the matrix sb uh, inverse is uh, multiplied by s you know sorry uh, so sw inverse multiplied by sb into w okay so w is the eigen factor and alpha is the corresponding eigen value okay so which is, which is basically lambda into w okay and then we select uh, k eigen factor so basically we sort the eigen value in the descending order and choose the k eigen factor corresponding to the k largest eigen value and this help in forming the transformation matrix w okay so <coughs> uh, so so we form a matrix w by stacking a selected eigen vector as column and then we project the data into new subspace so projecting the original data set x into new subspace to obtain the transform data set that is x mu equal to x into w where w is the uh, you know uh, transform matrix okay of the uh, eigen vector of k largest eigen value okay so then after that uh, so after that we have this uh, so basically this LDA that we had just solved here the equation the the transform data set X uh, which is new X will have reduced dimension and you know can be used for classification or other downstream tasks uh, while preserving as much as class discriminatory information as possible so LDA 6 uh, you know um, transformation matrix w that maximize the class you know between class scatter while mi uh, minimizing within class scatter aiming to create a you know subspace where class are well separated okay so i mean that's all that's all how it works actually so now let's move to advantages and disadvantages so first advantage is, is again dimensionality reduction and feature extraction so lda is useful for reducing the dimensionality of data set while preserving the class discriminatory information then it identify the most discriminative feature that helps separate cl uh, different classes then you know supervised learning method so LDA is a supervised learning method that takes class label into account while finding the optimal linear discriminant it uses information from you know class label making it suitable for classification task then it is also you know popular for reducing overfitting so it you know can help in reducing overfitting by transforming the data into a lower dimensional space while preserving class information then it handle multicollinearity so LDA perform well even when the independent variable are correlated, which is multicollinearity. Then let's talk about some disadvantages. Okay, so so first of all, it, it's very sensitive to outliers. So LDA is, you know, 
So, in, so outlier in the data can significantly affect the computation of the mean and covariance matrix, leading to sub suboptimal results. It assumes Gaussian distribution. So, what I, what I mean by that, LD assume that the data in each class is normally distributed, which might not be the case in real world data set. Then singular co covariance matrix. So, what it says when the you know, within class covariance matrix that is SW is singular or nearly singular, LDA failed to compute the in inverse of SW required for projection, so making it impossible to perform transformation. So other other disadvantage is it requires large sample sizes. So LDA perform well when the you know number of sample per class uh, is significantly larger than the number of features. So in class of small sample size or an unbalanced data set, LDA might not produce reliable reliable results. Then it doesn't handle non-linear data set. What, what, what that means? LDA is linear technique and might not capture complex non-linear relationship between variables similar to PCA. So, or singular value decomposition algorithm, which is again based on the same principle that PCA is based on. And, uh, and this will be our last technique that we will be discussing. And we will be understanding how this algorithm is different from other three that we have discussed previously. And after this, we will be moving towards tree-based algorithms. So let's understand singular value decomposition. So singular value decomposition is a mathematical method used to decompose a matrix into three separate matrices. And it's a fundamental tool in linear algebra that break down a matrix uh, A into a you know, product of three simpler matrices, which is U, summation, and V to the power T. So these matrices have distinct properties, okay? So you can see here all three matrices, okay? So U is an orthogonal matrix containing less singular vector, okay? Then summation is a diagonal matrix that basically, which, uh, I mean, explains that it's a non-negative real number on the diagonal, okay? I mean, this diagonal, okay? So known as singular values. Then V to the power T is an orthogonal matrix containing the right singular vector okay so the decomposition can be represented as you know a equal to u summation v to the power t okay and that is what how uh, i mean the equation of svd is represented so so svd has numer you know numerous application including dimensionality reduction so it is used to identify the most important feature in a data set by retaining the dominant singular value or vector then it is also famous for matrix ap approximation. So SVT can approximate a matrix using a lower rank approximation, which help in compressing data while retaining the essential information. Then it is also popular for image compression and denoising. So it is used to compress image and remove noise while preserving essential information. So SVT is a powerful tool, but can be computationally in intensive, particularly for large matrices. So truncated SVT <coughs> uh, which retains only a subset of most significant singular value vector is often used for practical implementation to reduce the computation time as well as memory requirements. Now, in the next slide, let's understand what is the key difference between PCA and uh, SVD. Okay, so they are closely related but serve different purposes. Okay, again, you know, right? I mean, if there is a if there is an invention of another algorithm that is again it will have added advantages over the existing one right and this is how the invention keep you know going on so basically let's understand the difference so svd is a f you know matrix factorization method that decomposes a matrix into a you know constituent parts that is singular vector and singular value so in general mathematical concept used for various purposes now PCA. So PCA is a specific application for SVD used for dimensionality reduction, whereas PCA, you know, aims to find a new set of uncorrelated variable that is principal component that captures the most significant variance in the original data. Then the other difference is um, matrix decomposition. So in SVD, it decomposes uh, decompose a matrix into three matrix, U summation V to the power T, where UV are the orth orthogonal matrix. Uh, summation is a diagon uh, diagonal matrix containing singular value whereas in PCA it uses SVD internally to compute the principal component so it calculates the eigenvectors uh, which is principal axis and eigenvalues of covariance matrix of the data okay then purposes okay so SVD used for various purposes including matrix factorization lower rank approximation solving linear system of equation and computing pseudocode inverses 
whereas PCA serve the purpose of specific, uh, you know, specifically designed for dimensional energy reduction by ad identifying the direction or you can say principal component that captures the maximum variance in the data and it is commonly used for feature extraction and visualization. Now, in terms of application, SVD applied to you know broader range of domain such as signal processing, image compression, uh, recommendation system, and linear algebra. Whereas PCA primarily used in statistics, machine learning, data analysis for reducing the dimension of data while preserving much variance as possible. Then output could be for SVD provide a full decomposition of original matrix into orthogonal matrix. Uh, and singular value whereas for PCA output is a reduced set of you know variable that is principal component that captures the maximum variance in the data so in a sense uh, PCA utilizes the mathematical concept of SVD to perform dimensionality reduction by selecting the most significant components which represents the direction of maximum variance in the data set while SVD itself is a more general matrix factorization technique with broader application beyond dimensionality reduction so hope you guys understood <coughs> uh, what makes them different okay let's understand working so it's a very simplest uh, working algorithm that uh, we are studying for now so let's understand so singular uh, you know value decomposition is again a matrix factorization method that decompose a matrix into three other matrices so mathematically for a matrix uh, svd is represented using a equal to u summation v to the power t where u and v are the orthogonal matrices and summation is a diagonal matrix containing the singular value of a so so the dimension of these matrices uh, basically means so u is a m into m matrix okay uh, where m is the number of row and you know <coughs> uh, so it represents the you know orthogonal matrix that uh, you know represents the uh, you know relationship between row in the original matrix so the column u are called the left singular vector okay now summation summation is the n into m matrix okay where m is the number of rows n is the number of column in a this is this is an m and you know diagonal matrix okay this one <coughs> diagonal matrix containing the singular value of original matrix on its diagonal so singular value are related to its strength or importance of the corresponding vector in u and v now the uh, v to the power t uh, or you can say the v star uh, is an n into n matrix uh, so basically n into n orthogonal matrix represents the relationship between column in the original matrix so the row of v to the power t or transpose of v are also called right singular vector so svd compute these matrix in a way that u and v contain the left and right singular vectors respectively which describe the transformations summation holds a singular value which signif signify the importance of this transformation the larger the singular value uh, the more significant uh, its corresponding vector u and v for reconstructing the original matrix a so the decomposition is fundamental in various mathematical operation data compression dimensional reduction and signal processing applications so this is what how uh, you know svd works let's understand the advantages and disadvantages so advantages says uh, it has dimensionality reduction again that is the main feature so svd is an effective method for reducing uh, you know dimensionality of data while retaining most of it relevant informations so it can be used to extract the most important feature from high dimensional data set then we have noise reduction as a feature so it can help in reducing noise and redundant information from the data which can be especially you know useful in the field of signal processing and image compression then we have numerical stability uh, advantage that tells uh, that SVD tells provide a numerically stable solution to problem like matrix inversion even for matrix that are ill con you know condition or singular then it's applicability okay so it's a versatile tool uh, used in various fields including natural language processing recommendation system image preprocessing and genetics among others now let's talk about uh, disadvantages so computationally expensive is the first disadvantages so for large data set svd can be computationally expensive especially when dealing with uh, you know with large matrix so computational complexity can make it impractical for very large data set then other problem is memory requirement so memory requirement for storing the decomposed matrix especially for full svd can be substantial making it challenging to handle large matrix in memory limited environments then again interpretability so while svd is an effective in reducing dimensionality the transform feature might not be easily interpretable in the original context 
so th so this lack of interpretability of component might hinder an understanding the order like pattern then data type limitations so svt might not be directly applicable to all the data types uh, especially when dealing with non numeric or categorical data which might need pre processing or transformation uh, before applying svt then we have sensitivity to missing value so svt is sensitive to missing value in the data set dealing with missing value require pre processing step that can affect you know the quality of decomposition so that's all for you know svt let's see the implementation okay see you in the next video thank you Thank you.